What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. And yes, today it's a big fat yes guys because we've got George from the George Benson Football Channel to do the collab that you man always wants, the bromance, the budding bromance. We're here to talk Chelsea and oh yes, it's double today because we're doing it in two parts. We're doing a one half, part one here on Football Therapy. Then you've got to scramble over to the George Benson Football Channel to catch the episode. Epic conclusion of part two of today's collaboration. George, how you doing, my brother? Oh, I'm just sitting here admiring that introduction. That, that was that was fantastic, Yanislav. I'm impressed. Mate, my introduction's coming in hard like the Chelsea transfer window. Don't make any gross jokes about that. Um, today we're gonna on my channel, me and George are gonna be talking about the transfers, the high profile additions to this Chelsea squad, to Super Frankie Lampard's Tricky Blues. Is this the greatest Chelsea transfer window of all time? And how are these players going to play together? What's the plan? How do they fit? Because it's mental. And in part two, we're really amping up. We're going to go over to George's channel and we're going to talk about the expectations. It's no longer Frank, the academy school teacher with some feel-good factor. The Galacticos have arrived. What are the expectations of this Chelsea squad and team next season? So that's going to be epic. Make sure once you finish this, we move over to George's George's channel but uh, so let's begin this part and ask the big man himself George how you feeling my dude how do you feel oh I mean like we, we could talk about a lot of things here we could talk about going out and having a drink we could talk about sitting in front watching a comedy or we could we could talk about how we feel about Chelsea's transfer window which is exactly what we're all here for it's been good, you know, it's been a ride that is like you strap in and normally roller coasters last about 30 seconds. You wonder why you've sat in that line for, well, stood in the line and walked slowly for 90 minutes to ride for 30 seconds. This one hasn't just been like one transfer saga and then tick and then shut up. This has been like one finishes, the next one begins. And the conclusion of it is you walk off that roller coaster and you're like, blimey, this is... Good. This is exhilarating. It's been an amazing window. It's been, I, I, I know like, for, as Chelsea fans right now, we're all thinking like this is the best transfer window ever. But bringing it back into perspective a little bit, we've got to remember it's not done for a start. Chelsea is still looking to probably sign like two more players. Uh, and also like when you compare what we had when Abramovich took over and we remember that incredible first window, what we had there wasn't really a team that was ready to challenge for the league. Obviously, this season is kind of the same because last year we didn't challenge for the league at all. But I think that these players now that we're bringing in, obviously we're going to talk about expectations and stuff over on my channel, but like, I feel like this has been a window where Chelsea have addressed the issues that were just alarmingly obvious, plus more. So now it's like, all right, we've got a squad now. Well, we have got a squad, and it's seemingly they are going all in, which is something we can touch on a little bit as well. Personally, I feel like the obvious comparison here would be the original breaking football transfer window back in the day, the one you alluded to, 2004. For me, I feel like this one's a little bit more long-termism. It's almost like equal Galactico quality, but they're all super young and every, you know, it's just absolutely mad. And also the context is required. That was pre-financial fair play. This is post-financial fair play. So it almost is more painful for opposition fans because Chelsea are balancing the books. Yes, financial fair play has been relaxed, but if you look at the numbers, not just the Hazard, Morata money, not just the two window, uh, two dormant transfer windows, sales, revenue, they're bouncing the books, they're doing this normally, and there's nothing opposition fans can do. Personally, I asked you how you're feeling, you're feeling good, I'm feeling good, but like many Chelsea fans, I don't know how to process it, mate, because I'm still, I can't graduate over the absolute positive bars I've got for the first ruddy signing, Hakim Ziyech, mate, that sweet left boot, I genuinely think that's a game changer. I feel like Pulisic's gonna be on a madness this season. My heart can't take any more, mate. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Should we just both quit our channels now before we both like suffer palpitations that could end it for <laughs> yeah, us? Let's tap out, mate. I'm coming to, mate, we'll sell coconuts in Bali or whatever you do out there. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> Make I, these I clothes. 
<laughs> yeah, there you go, yeah. I can't, um, I can't get to the point in great, I Kai Havertz is such a baller, but I'm still like losing myself over um, like Ziyech and stuff. It's absolutely mental. Um, it, so we're both very, very excited, clearly. It is, um, you know, arguably the greatest transfer window of Chelsea's history. I know you've said as well, you've alluded to the, there's rumours of additional two players coming. But um, <laughs> I, I want to talk about how Frank's going to play football. Um, you know, we're, later on, we're going to talk about the expectations of how he's going to play. But it's madness, right? Um, I heard something this morning that got me thinking before we started this call. Carlo Ancelotti got the best out of um, the Chelsea side when we scored a lot of goals. 0-9-0-10. You know, a lot of people would still argue that's Chelsea's greatest ever. Uh, team under, you know, under under Ancelotti, Lampard would have seen that he's apparently absorbed loads and loads from his managers. Do you think Frank Lampard's footballing ethos philosophy might hail more from the likes of Ancelotti than perhaps like a Jose Mourinho in terms of the sort of all-out attack? I think obviously, like with Frank, it's always been a case of we know the player that he was, and even though he wants to be regarded as a manager in a totally different conversation to what he was as a player. It can you can take as much inspiration from managers of your past and during your playing days as you want, but at the same time, the way that Frank Lampard has learned football isn't by becoming a manager and then becoming a player. He was a player and now he's a manager. And the way that Frank obviously played, it was very attack-minded. Yes, he was good defensively as well. He was one of the best midfielders of his generation, if not, I'd argue one of, if not the best. You know, so I think. The way that this Chelsea team looked last season, if we compare it to what we anticipate that we haven't seen yet, we were very good going forward last season anyway. It was just a case of we we probably didn't have the the, the lethal clinical way to just finish things, you know? Like we, we'd have finished so much better last season if we did take more chances. Whereas now, like, okay, like I don't mean to just talk bad upon William because he's gone to Arsenal, but when you look at him on the right-hand side and you compare him to the delivery that we've already seen within four minutes of his debut from Hakim Ziyech, that quality is just skyrocketing. So like in terms of creating chances, we're still gonna create so many flipping chances, but now we've got one of the world's best marksmen to finish them as well. No disrespect to Tammy, I still think he's gonna get minutes and score goals too, but in every sense, we yeah, batch wise probably yeah. that, that good. In every sense, we've elevated. <laughs> so sorry, sorry I keep talking over you. I think it's because I can't <laughs> yeah, hear yeah. you very well in this. <laughs> no, because I try to make a bad joke. When you went the world's best markman, I wanted to throw a Mishy Batchway joke in there, but oh, of course, you know, like gone. no disrespect, <laughs> but Mishy's only just <laughs> under Timo's level. Only just <laughs> get your flow back. You were making good points there, so yeah. Going to the, the absolute elite gunman, Timo Werner. Yeah, I think like, I, I'm the same as you. When I look at like what makes me most excited, I think like we've just had like an Avengers moment on this video where we're both just like, ah! Like, I think Timo, like he's just gonna score so many goals. Like, I don't, I don't even care about, you know me, like I don't care about making bold statements and then people like saying, you're an idiot, you don't know anything. I think he's gonna get 25 goals in his first season. I really do, and that's Premier League goals. I think he'll score way more. Whoa, Premier League goals. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, I mean, he, the, the, guy, the guy, he looks like he's like, his, his, like, you know, he's, he's got ice in his veins at the moment, isn't he? He looks like he's like he's not here to take part. He's here to take over Conor McGregor style. Do you know what I mean? He does look like prime, like, oh, this Chelsea side is going to feed me 1,000 chances. You bet you're behind, don't swear, Yannick, that I'm going to bury so many of those chances. All right, so you said a couple of things there that I want to pick up on before I also methodically dismantles your good flow trying to make a poor batch Y joke. Um, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I want to talk about Frank Lampard's approach. You're right, we did score a lot of goals last season. It won't be a problem and we should look to finish more. Obviously, the Vogue topic is, of course, the weak defence, but I don't even think we need to go into that because we know the score. We conceded a lot of goals. I think we might touch on that on part two on your channel in terms of expectations. Um, it was too bad, but in terms of um, scoring, yes, I think we want to score more, but I do want to sort of finish up on this part about like how Frank approaches his game plan, his tactics. I think 
Yes, it is outscore the opponent, but I think also something that I've heard Frank say a few times, a recurring theme across his first season as Chelsea manager, is he wants to almost psychologically beat the opponent. And that goes with like scoring at a certain time, you know, scoring the second goal in the first half right at the end. He doesn't want them to come out. He wants the opponent's subconscious, whether they know it or not, to feel like, oh, well, we're beaten. And of course, our performance last season was the opposite of that. We'd be one goal ahead, we'd let them think they're in it still, and then ultimately they'd, you know, they'd uh, equalize. And that isn't so much, it is poor defending and not keeping our nerve and being naive, but it's also just the psychological battle of both sides. Chelsea need to feel comfortable, like we've got absolute superstar gunman firepower, even if our defence is a little bit suspect, we just beat him psychologically into submission early doors and then they come out whether they like it or not, like, what's the point? Even if we, that Chelsea have exhausted all their energy in the first half, going three goals up, where there's just no way we're in this game. Even if they're trying, they're psychologically, subconsciously defeated. Uh, something that Frank's spoken about before, it's an exciting way of playing football. Can you see this being present with these signings, with these attackers? Do you think this is something he can achieve with this Galactico Chelsea team? I think it is. And I think the reason why last season we did let teams back into games so easily is because we are so lethargic sometimes when we're in transition. And I think what we've done with the players we've brought in is it kind of solves the problems of the individuals who would actually bring that to the team. Like at the end of the day, you look at Bayern Munich, the reason they're so good is, is because when they score one goal, they become like a machine and then everything starts ticking. There's no cogs in that machine that aren't working in fluidity with one another. With the Chelsea team last season, there were players that would run around like headless chickens trying to win the ball back and when they got the ball they'd run with it, they'd do things with it. But it wasn't everybody. There were always like three or four players in any starting eleven who were tired or just didn't run back or had some kind of weakness in their game which would mean that the intensity of the way the team played would slow down. And I think what we've done with these signings is not only do we like pick them up and put them back into the first team to immediately improve in terms of like the way that these players play, I actually think we've made world-class signings, not just signings to like improve the squad and the team. I think it's like we've bought in players that are actually already made, like top draw quality. And I top think, draw and still so young. Yeah, and that's the thing as well. Like they're so young, they're not going to be getting tired because their their legs aren't wearing out because they're super young. We know that Frank's training style is very intense, and I think a lot of times last season I heard people say. You know, he's training them too hard and that's why we burn out in games. I don't think that's going to be the case now. So I think these youngsters, they've got it, mate. We've got the recipe. It's just about making the dish now. Absolutely. And it's, it's just to finish as well, it's like you said, after scoring a goal, Bayern Munich know what to do, whether it's methodically shut it down like a machine or in perhaps Chelsea, Frank Lampard's case that he wants, score another one, kill it off. But we, this Chelsea side, naively, they score a goal and then they look like, what do we do now? Rather than go, 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 you know, go again, which I think Frank Lampard wants. Right, so I think that's a good place to end part one. We've got excited, we've got amped up about the new signings. We've talked about how Chelsea want to play, maybe, or we've certainly speculated about that. We're going to go to now talk about the expectations of the upcoming season. It's going to be epic, so uh, obviously go check out George's channel, but you're about to anyway. Uh, the George Benson Football Channel for part two. Um, is there anything else for me to say? Subscribe to Football Therapy. Drop a like on this video. Um, Let's get 8,000 of them. 8,000. <laughs> 8,000 likes apparently from George. Um, I won't say goodbye. I'll say see you in a second. Boom. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me,